Are you leveraging community service to find a job? What about pickleball? Have you ever thought about creating content about your job search struggles? Or what about pitching a target company with a business plan to improve their operations? These are just a few creative ideas we'll cover today. If you're struggling to find a job, it's time to think outside the box and I'm here to help. In this video, I'm going to share eight unique strategies for finding a job in today's competitive market. Stick around for the end for a LinkedIn profile optimization demo that reveals tips that you simply will not find anywhere. All right, so let's dive in. Item one, in-person networking. Networking in person is more valuable than ever. So at job networking events, approach these events with one goal, help others. Focus entirely on sol solving others' problems instead of highlighting yourself or your needs. So when you're asked about yourself, reply, my goal tonight is to help others. Let's see if there's anyone in my LinkedIn network that I can connect you with and go ahead and open up your phone. This approach will not only make you the most memorable person in the room, it also ensures that others will help you later. Now, beyond typical and traditional job networking events, instead, let's reduce some of the anxiety of those high pressure events and start thinking about how we can connect in other settings. First of all, community service. Dedicate time to volunteering. Talk to people. Ask about their work and share that you're looking for a job. If you're employed, I recommend volunteering a minimum of once a month. If you're unemployed, aim for once a week. Then go to meetups. Meetups.com is a great way to find and identify local events. You could attend event events around your interest, and that could be pickleball. It could be knitting. It could be craft beers or anything else. And then when appropriate, you'll want to mention in casual conversation that you're in job search. Remember, it's incredibly critical that you take an interest in others first and let the job conversations evolve naturally, but don't shy away from steering the conversation in that direction or to that topic when you can. Item two, proactive business solutioning. So here's an example of an initiative leading to results that I personally did back in 2010. In 2010, I was job hunting and I just interviewed at a startup recruiting agency. And instead of waiting for a response to find out if they were going to hire me or not, I drafted a two page business plan on how they could use social media to boost both brand awareness and their overall revenue. I showed up unannounced at the office. I dressed professionally and I shared this plan with HR. HR left the room and within minutes, the CEO joined me and asked me what I was doing on Monday and hired me on the spot, even though I was not their top candidate. Taking initiative works. And so here's how you can do it. Researcher, target company's social media, products or website, develop actionable insights or suggestions to improve on an aspect of their business, and then proactively send these ideas to them, bring them in for an interview, share them after an interview. This level of effort sets you apart and is far more impactful than just submitting endless applications, especially when we're talking about being proactive before job interviews. Item three, content creation. Even if you're not a content creator, sharing your expertise can help you stand out sharing your job search journey can help you stand out so let's start with what's easiest blogs you can write blogs on your expertise on market trends or even write a blog on your job search journey you could share strategies failures funny stories and more next and the next level up is explore doing some video content now this can be long form or short form content Again, this could be focused in on your expertise or your job search journey. If you don't like being on camera, which a lot of people don't, you can use screen shares or AI avatars. 
just to stay away from that. Now, if you are comfortable on camera, you could even, again, share your expertise in that way or consider doing a job search vlog. Leverage LinkedIn. I want you to share this content that you create and put it back on LinkedIn because when you're in job search mode, you want to be able to showcase your knowledge and increase your visibility to potential employers. And that's obviously a great platform to do it on. Item four, learning. Now, while job hunting, focus on enhancing and or developing your skills. So certifications and education can absolutely enhance your resume and show interviewers that you're proactive about growth. Now, some programs also offer hands-on learning opportunities, and that's an excellent way to network with others. Even if the education doesn't directly lead to a job, it's starting to demonstrate your commitment to self-improvement and staying current within your industry, industry trends, et cetera. Item five, recruiting agencies. Recruiters can help you for free, so take advantage of this resource. At a minimum, sign up online, upload your resume, and share the type of role you're seeking. Now, if you want to go that one step further, which people really aren't doing that much of these days, for that personal touch, visit a local recruiting agency in person. Dress professionally, bring copies of your resume, and show gratitude for them being helpful and assisting you. This may not seem like a unique tip, but it seems and appears as though people are getting away from using recruiters to help them it's going to be really helpful for you that they're working behind the scenes and finding different avenues to help find you a job. Item six, build a consulting website. Hey, if you're unemployed, create a simple consulting website to showcase your expertise. So what do I mean? You could create something as simple as a landing page with a Calendly link and just highlight some services that you might be willing to put out there into the world. This can be extremely helpful for a couple reasons. One, it may actually be an opportunity to make money, but this also doubles up as a temporary role you can put on your LinkedIn profile to show that you're actively working if you are currently unemployed. And then as you get into those job interviews, if asked about it, you could say, you know, I started doing some consulting work and I've put myself out there. But I'm here because I really want to contribute to the a larger organization where I can make a bigger slash broader impact. It's an opportunity to get more eyes on you and your background. Now, item seven, which directly correlates with item six, is maybe consider creating an Upwork or Fiverr profile. If you're not familiar with these platforms, platforms like Upwork and Fiverr are great for offering your services as a freelancer. So create a profile highlighting your skills and see if you can earn income while you're looking for full-time work. This is definitely a recommendation for those who are currently unemployed, but this keeps your experience relevant and demonstrates your hustle to future employers. And you just never know where one of these contract opportunities might lead. Okay. The last item is LinkedIn profile optimization. So what I want to do now is we're going to dive over into a screen share and I'm going to walk through multiple ways to optimize your LinkedIn profile by looking at my friend David's profile. I'd like to start off by just saying thank you so much to David for allowing me to nitpick his profile in a very public setting. Thank you, David. I appreciate it. So let's dive right in. We're looking at David's profile from the open to work perspective and David's actively looking for a job. Now, these tips are going to lean towards people who are unemployed, but all the tips are pretty helpful for anybody in job search mode. So let's dive in. One of the items that I've discussed in numerous other videos and we'll discuss here is this real estate. This real estate is incredibly valuable and when it's underutilized, it's not creating a strong call to action. When somebody lands on our profile, we want to tell them what we need and where we're trying to drive them towards immediately. So as we go in here, like 
what is this telling us? Well, this isn't telling us enough about David. So here's what I would recommend to David. We use this again as a call to action, and the best way to do that is to use a tool called Canva. Many people are familiar with Canva. It's a free tool. So I want to show you what I created for David. So here's what this would look like. Now we push his LinkedIn background photo to show that he's seeking technical program manager jobs, that he's a scrum master with experience in telecom and software development. He's open to full-time and contract roles in these locations. This is his contact info. Obviously with contact info, you'd have to feel comfortable doing that. And then he's highlighting that he's linked his full resume in the about section below. I'm also gonna show another place where he can link that too. So now, as we click off of this, you can see if we put that here, it's created a fantastic call to action for people. What should they do with David when they land on his profile? Now going here next, this is a fantastic picture. I really wouldn't change anything about it. I love the picture. Then we go down to the name. And so instantly in bold, after his last name, he's utilizing a very important tool. We want to highlight the specific role we're looking for, specific skills. So this is great, comma MBA, comma CSM. No, I don't think CSM is common language enough to be used here. So I would recommend to David that he would say maybe comma MBA, comma. This is a the CSM is a certified Scrum Master, so it might just say Scrum Master, whatever can fit on this line, or he could put his name comma technical program manager, because that's the job he's trying to drive towards. So as we get into here, this section's really important. This is your headline. So I love how he starts, veteran technical program manager with 10 plus years of PM experience in telecom, software development, and IT. And he's an expert in water file, waterfall and agile and scrum. That's actually very specific and fantastic, okay? Uh, it's the last piece that I might change a little bit. I might put some additional specific skills in here, but high EQ, uh, that would be my expectation for anybody in a program manager role. And then skilled music producer and creator. It's interesting, but I want the headline to be so laser focused on, well, what kind of skills does David have? And the more specific up here, the better. So that would be my recommendation. Now, we can see when you see this orange LinkedIn button, it means that David has an upgraded account, but he's missed an opportunity to utilize one of those features. And so I want to go back to the resume. You can throw the resume into the about section. We're going to explore that in a moment. But because he has an upgraded account, he has an opportunity to do something else. Let's hop over to my profile for a second so I can walk you through this. So anybody who's got this upgraded account, you can hit edit here and then just scroll all the way to the bottom and you can say edit custom button. So it's going to give you two options. It's going to give you a custom button option, but my preferred option is the link. So what can David do? He can use his Google Doc resume because it's actually going to have a site address. And then he can put my resume in bold, check out my background, whatever he wants to put here. But this will act as a driver. And so, again, if we click off of this, okay, thanks, oops, sorry, wrong thing, discard, we'll get out of here. And so what you can see is for here, I've built in my website. Obviously, I'm trying to drive people to my website, but... For David, that would be built in right here as his resume. So huge opportunity to optimize here. Okay, I know it's already quite a bit, but let's keep going. So then he's done a great job of open to work and highlighting the specific positions that he's looking for. We'll skip this sales navigator. This is just highlighting this for me. Then we see the about section and activity. So I instantly am going to go back to my profile for a second. So you'll see about section services, but the section that's missing for David or that I'd like him to work on is building in a featured section. So this is a potential second opportunity to highlight your resume and put it right here. It could be highlighting some expertise that you have, but I like one featured item. You can see how much more it hops off the page or jumps off the page. 
But again, this could be a link to his profile. This could be a link to something that he's created. It could go back to the earlier parts of the video where it's been a content strategy, right? So let's come back to David though. Okay, so as we go here and we dive into his about section, in these first four lines, we are really trying to highlight our specific skills, what we want people to know about us if they weren't to click see more. Now, I think he's done a good job of highlighting his high level. So let's click that. And what you can instantly see is that the about section could be more robust. So there's two major opportunities here. We're going to talk a little bit more about this, but I'd like to see these icons replaced with bullets. I think it will clean it up a little bit, but I want David to drop all of his unique and specific skills in here. That way he'll show up in more keyword searches. And then I also want the Google Doc link to his resume and I want him to drive people towards his resume. We're gonna embed our resumes into these profiles as much as possible. Since David has an upgraded account, he can do it at the top, he can do it in the about section, and he can do a featured section as well. So he has three opportunities. If you don't have an upgraded account, you have the opportunity to put it in your about section and do a featured section as well. As we go to activity, well, I know David's pretty active, but he hasn't been as active as I'd like to see on LinkedIn. So what does that mean? I want to see David liking, commenting, and posting daily. He doesn't have to do all three each day, but I want activity at least every business day, if not seven days a week, and if not multiple times a day. The algorithm rewards us for showing up all the time. So that would be another recommendation for David. That could be sharing cool articles, cool videos, and just again, commenting, liking, especially on people in the industry so that his profile jumps up more and more. And then boom, if anybody clicks into his profile, what are they seeing at the top? He's open to work, here are all his skills, here's his resume. Path of least resistance. There's gonna to be tons of opportunities for people to reach out to him because they know exactly what he's looking for. As we get down into the experience section, there's not too much critiquing here. David has done a very good job of highlighting his skills, highlighting his accomplishments. What I want here is more consistency. So at the top, he's really highlighting one item and then he has bullets associated with it. Now in this next one, he didn't do that. The bullets are formatted in a different way. So I just want consistency in terms of the formatting throughout. Just massive, massive consistency. And then, you know, as I, as I go down here, there's tons of great data and information. This is great because this is going to show up in keyword searches when people are looking for those specific skills. Then as we get down here, this looks a little cleaner with these small bullets. And so I would just, again ask David to be a little bit more consistent here. That's going to show up well. I can just tell you the education stuff is all good. Couple of masters, bachelors, this is all fantastic. Licenses and certifications. So I would highlight to David that we just want to get this updated because it expired last month. Then from a skills perspective, David definitely followed the old criteria on LinkedIn, which was adding up to 50 skills. We can now add up to 100 skills. Then the last tip that I really want to drive towards, recommendations. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Go think about everybody. Go back, reflect back. Everybody you've worked with who you enjoyed working with, write them an unsolicited LinkedIn recommendation. This is a great way to open doors and open conversations with previous colleagues who may not know you're looking for work or the timing might just be excellent. They may know of a job that just came up. So received one and gave one. Make this, again, 10, 30, 40, 50. This is a great way to network and spend your time. And we can always double down with ChatGPT to help us write these recommendations. We can just poke in a few ideas. Again, we'll just go with David. Here's what I loved about David, A, B, and C. Write a four-sentence LinkedIn recommendation for me. And then you can edit it a little bit and then send it off to that person. David's profile overall is really good. And this is what I'm always referencing when I'm saying 99.99% of LinkedIn profiles aren't optimized. 
You may look at David's profile and think it's great. I think it's great too. There are some additional opportunities there. Thanks so much, David. And let's move on to our conclusion. And to wrap up, stop relying solely on job applications. And if you're not currently working, you have tons of time to implement one, two, or all of these strategies. Get creative, take initiative, and you'll increase your chances of success. Good luck.